عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته اللهم لا أحثي ثناعا عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الحاشمي وعلى آله وأصحابه البرة الكرام وعلى سائر الأنبياء والمرسلين والملائكة المقربين Thumma Amma Ba'd. I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. We praise Him and we thank Him for it is Allah who is ultimately deserving of our utmost gratitude and praise. And I send the best of salutations at, at, on this occasion on As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, as many of you are very familiar that India has become engulfed in a major COVID crisis. And this continues until this very day. It came to a point that they were reporting about 400,000 COVID cases a day. That's new cases. And prior to international aid arriving, oxygen had run out at the hospitals and people were dying right and left. In fact, when I woke up this morning for Salatul Fajr, I read an article that in one specific city in India, they had woken up to a major surprise. Hundreds of bodies floating in the river, dead bodies. And they suspect that it was due to COVID because it's a tradition they either burn the bodies or they burn the bodies and put them in the river. And that's a sad reality. May Allah preserve and protect us all. I didn't know what to talk to you about today, but recently I watched a video. I subscribed to a channel called Ilmfeed, and it popped up five, six days ago on, on my phone, sitting on the couch one day after Taraweeh. And it was a video about a man that you may have heard of called Piyari Khan. Hands up if you've heard of this name. One, two, three, a few of you. If you haven't, I suggest that you look him up. When oxygen had run out at the hospitals and it was a chaotic scene. Now, of course, you know, we have a very short memory right? and the news headlines change almost every week. Yesterday was a crisis in India. Today is the Palestine crisis and tomorrow it's going to be something else. But I want us to reflect over this a little bit as I try to deliver a message in this short period of time that I have this morning with you. When all the oxygen had run out and it was a chaotic scene and people were dropping dead right and left, there was a lot of, you know, very hard trenching videos uh, that we all saw, people shared on WhatsApp, the news was showing it. There was a man by the name of Piyari Khan and he couldn't just sit around and do nothing. He had to be proactive. And so he started making phone calls and reaching out to vendors, asking them if, they, if he could buy oxygen from them. And of course, at this crisis, the prices went astronomical, right? It just, it was just through the sky. So he said, no matter what it costs, every week he would buy 450 metric tons of liquid oxygen and donate it to the hospital which is about, it cost him about 8.5 lakh rupees, and I think that's about $125,000. And he did this for about two weeks. Every day he would buy and he would donate to the hospital. And Piyadi Khan actually started off um, selling oranges outside of a train station. That was his job. But he had a vision for himself. He was determined. And so after making some money, he purchased a rickshaw. And then that rickshaw turned into a small Suzuki van, taking people to the airports. And eventually that turned into two vans, three vans. 
and now he has an enterprise of 300 trucks. This reminded me of an incident and a, a time where a disease, a drought, crippled the blessed city of Medina during the reigns of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And the crops had dried up, the disease was so bad that people were laying dead in the streets. There was no food. So if they were not dying because of the disease, they were dying because of lack of food. I mean, you know how it was, right, last year, when COVID happened. I mean, this is America. But if you went to the supermarkets, the, the, the shelves were empty. I mean, for heaven's sake, we had a toilet paper issue. Not some of you, you had lotas at home, but, right? Imagine back then, there was no food, the disease was so bad that people were dropping dead right and left. There was no hope. And then somehow news came to a consortium of businessmen that Uthman bin Affan was due to receive several containers in modern context, several containers of food and goods and it was coming from Syria. And so this business consortium came to the home of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu and they knocked his door. And of course he opens the door and he sees these men and they said, look Uthman, you know the plight of the city. This disease has crippled us all. We have loved ones, friends, neighbors, associates, everyone are dying. There's no food. But we've received news that, you know, Containers of food are arriving, they belong to you. Uthman was a businessman, he was a tradesman. And they said, if you don't mind, we will pay you 10% more profit than you would have made otherwise. And we will take this from you. We will dispense it among the people. At least they will have some food and they will have, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, care. And, and it may make their situation a little better. He said to them, Zadani, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I understand the situation and I live in the same city, but I'm sorry to inform you, I have a better offer. He said, huh? You know what's happening, right? He said, yeah, I'm sorry, I have a better offer. They said, fine. We will give you 30% more profit from what you would have made originally. He said, sorry, Zadani, I have a better offer. They said, look, we will give you 50% more profit than you would have made originally had you sold it to someone else. And this is for charity. We will give it and dispense it among the needy people. He said, Zadani, I have a better offer. They said, huh? Are you Uthman bin Affan? How could you have a better offer than this? When we are the business consortium and the muscle of the Arabian Peninsula, there is no one that can give you more money than what we are offering you. He said, Zadani Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala bi kulli dirham in ashara. He said, you are offering me 10%, 30%, 50% more profit. But for every one that I give, Allah is willing to give me 10 more. Why should I stand here and negotiate with you? When I have donated it, fi sabilillah, let it arrive and go dispense it on yawmul qiyamah. I shall stand before the throne of Allah, awaiting the reward for what I have done. Ya Rabb, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. You know, this reminds me of... Uh, the incident that happened with Mufti Mahmoud Gangohi. I'm getting warmed up, so I don't know if you guys got to go somewhere. Yeah. How many of you know Mufti Mahmoud Gangohi? Rahmatullah alayhi? One, two. Man, if you're from South Asia, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Man. Familiarize yourself with your history. He was a philanthropist. He was a politician. A politician that even non-Muslims have written about. He was a muhaddith also. So one day he was in the masjid with his disciples and his students. And he was giving them some advice and a beggar walked in. And the beggar started asking for money. 
So he opened his wallet and he gave him 200 rupees and the beggar left. After he concluded his discourse, his disciples and students said to him, with all due respect, Sheikh, you could have given the man two rupees. Okay, if you felt generous, you could have given him 20 rupees. You gave him 200 rupees? You are spoiling his taste, his habit. He is going to constantly come and beg. So Sheikh Saab ne ek jumla kaha. Kanpur ke zara sun liye. He said something so profound to his students in response to their inquiry. He said, Jab me isko dene laga, to zehen me ek soch aai, ke shukr hai Allah ka, ke aaj to me dene walo me se hun, aur lene walo me se nahi hun. Subhanallah. If you didn't understand, ask those who did. The Sheikh said, when I was about to dispense charity to this beggar, a thought came to my mind. And in that moment, I thank the Lord that today I am among those who can dispense charity and not on the receiving end of charity. Subhanallah. No matter who you are, brothers and sisters, no matter what your situation might be. I know a brother sitting right here. Just before Ramadan, his entire home was burnt to the ground. Everything he ever owned, everything that his entire family owned was burnt. All these memories, all these possessions burnt to the ground. I know many people here. I'm looking at you. You've lost your jobs. You've lost loved ones. But no matter what our situation might be, we are far better off than millions of people across the globe. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. When we rotate our gaze across the globe, quickly we will identify that the world we are living in has become rather gripped into unprecedented turmoil. From political turbulence to economic instability, social mayhem, anarchy, lawlessness, and the list continues to grow. Now, experts have explained that a lot of this is simply a result of the fact that you and me have moved away from selflessness to selfishness, from togetherness to self-centeredness, and from mutual growth to individual advancement. So it is no wonder why today we are hearing slogans like the world's richest 1% has far more wealth than the remaining 99. A depressing disparity. So while Allah had designed the universe to take care of the needs of every single human being, understand that it was never designed or decorated to take care of the greed of every single human being. And because many today have decided to live a life of utter greed, want, and desire, millions across the globe are suffering as a result of being deprived of the very basic necessities. And so while this may result in so many of us sobbing, complaining, and losing hope, the English proverb said it best. Complaining about darkness doesn't help, but lighting a candle does. Complaining about darkness doesn't help, but lighting a candle does. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Complaining about darkness doesn't help, but lighting a candle does. And this is my message to you. In the midst of the crisis that you are seeing, whether it be in Kashmir or Palestine or in Myanmar or in any other part of the world today, ask yourselves, ask yourself as you sit here this morning, what am I willing to do to light that candle? What am I willing to do to light that candle? The English proverb said it best. The majority of us in life will not do great things 
but nothing prevents us in doing simple things in a great way. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Majority of us in life will not do great things, but nothing prevents us today in doing simple things in a great way. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tuba li abdin ja'alahu allahu miftahan lil khayr wa mighlaqan lil sharr. Glad tidings is for that one individual in any community that becomes a beacon of light for others and a lock to every and any type of misery that ever exists. Piyari Khan, one may say that, you know, what's 8.5 lakh rupees? It's $120,000. Right? Many people have the audacity to think, yeah, $120,000. And he's in India. And even in America, you, a doctor making, you know, half a million, a million a year, you'll think 50 times before even donating that kind of money. Businessman, sitting right here today, you'll think 50 times. I run a charity, those who have more money are more reluctant in giving than the ones who don't. It's not about the amount that you give, it's about the thought and the inclination and the proactiveness. This guy was proactive. He has a business of millions of dollars. Right? When somebody's, I read one billion dollars today. But he took the initiative. He acted when even his government was not there for the people. It reminds me of my mentor, Abdul Sattar Eidi, who said, Aaj log pare likhe to ban gaye, lekin aaj tak insaan nahi bane. People have become competent and intellectual, but they have not yet become humans. The English proverb said that there is no doubt we are human beings, but the question begged to be answered is when are we going to start being human? He acted. And so I want to leave you with this. As you leave, what are you willing to do to light a candle? That was the whole objective of Ramadan's training. The Prophet said it is Shahrul Muwasa. The month in which you are trained to tap, one's, to tap someone's life in a positive way. To provide a shoulder to lean on. To give a helping hand. What are you willing to do to stand in Piyari Khan's shoes today? Finally, aspire to inspire before you expire. Aspire to inspire before you expire. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us among those whose invocations were accepted during the blessed month of Ramadan. Among those whose siyam and qiyam was accepted during the blessed month of Ramadan. We ask Allah that he adds its reward into our mizani hasanat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows the spirit of Ramadan to remain with us throughout these remaining months. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he does not deprive us of many more Ramadans up ahead. We ask Allah to preserve us and to protect us. We ask Allah to keep the ummah united, connected and protected. We ask Allah to provide his aid and assistance to all of those who are suffering globally and locally. Brothers in faith and brothers in humanity, we ask, O oh Allah, to provide your aid to them. O oh Allah, assist them. O oh Allah, engulf them in your mercy. O oh Allah, do not lay on us a burden that is beyond our capacity to handle. O oh Allah, let us understand the purpose of being a human being. O oh Allah, let us be there for others. O oh Allah, in this let us find joy. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we ask of you to forgive us for our sins, to pardon us for our shortcomings, to put our hearts and minds at rest. O oh Allah, allow us to O oh Allah, facilitate our tasks. O oh Allah, allow us to achieve our goals in life. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we ask of you to accept our gathering. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, brothers and sisters. On behalf of our Amir here at IC3, J, at IC3, right? Uh, ICCC, uh, Brother Danny Mohsin, who made the announcements, and his family, on behalf of myself and my family, on behalf of all of the IC3 management, I would like to wish you all 
a joyful Eid, Eid Mubarak, taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum salih al-a'mal, kul amantum bi khair, and please avoid hugging. Sakumullah khair. Enjoy the food outside. Barakallahu feekum. As-salamu alaykum.